hello guys welcome to my ten in this video we are going to look at the anatomy of the inguinal canal we are also going to look at its extent direction boundaries and deep inguinal ring superficial inguinal ring and also the structures passing through them so if you are going to stick with me till the end i am going to make sure that you are going to learn the most all right let's get started where is inguinal canal it is situated in the lower part of the abdomen here somewhere it's an oblique intramuscular passage it lies like this oblique all right this is an oblique intramuscular passage in the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall and it lies parallel to the medial half of the inguinal ligament we have the inguinal ligament from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle right so it lies parallel to the medial half of the inguinal ligament it is 4 cm long it is 4 cm long and directed downwards forwards and medially like this it is directed like this it is formed due to descent of the testis and ovary why is it formed it is formed due to the descent of testis and ovary testis and ovary during the uterine life so the main contents of inguinal canal is spermatic cord in the male and the round ligament in the female what are the main contents it's uh, spermatic cord in the male and in female it's the round ligament now coming to the extent and direction of the inguinal canal so actually the inguinal canal it extends from the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring so if you if i'm drawing it this is the anterior superior iliac spine this is the pubic tubercle and this was the inguinal ligament right this is the inguinal ligament so how is the inguinal canal situated it lies from the about 1.2 cm to 1.25 cm parallel about like this this is the deep inguinal ring and it extends obliquely parallel to the medial half of the inguinal ligament and it extends like this so this is the deep inguinal ring deep inguinal ring and this is the superficial inguinal ring so the inguinal canal extends from the deep inguinal ring which is an oval opening and it uh, lies to the superficial inguinal ring which is a triangular gap so now coming to the boundaries of the inguinal canal boundaries of the inguinal canal so what do we have in the anterior boundary first we will discuss about the anterior boundary anteriorly it is formed by the skin anteriorly it is formed by the skin and then below the skin we have the superficial fascia and after the superficial fascia we have the aponeurosis of aponeurosis of external oblique and the internal oblique so this is the anterior wall so coming to the posterior wall posterior wall so the posterior wall is formed by the from deep to superficial by first one fascia transversalis fascia transversalis and then after the fascia transversalis we have the conjoint tendon don't worry i am going to draw and show it to you anterior wall is formed by the skin superficial fascia and the aponeurosis of external oblique and the internal oblique the posterior wall is formed by the fascia transversalis and the conjoint tendon so roof is formed by the so we are going to discuss about the roof so what is the roof formed by it is formed by the lower arched fibers of internal oblique and the transverse abdominus internal oblique and the transverse abdominus fibers form the roof and what forms the floor floor of the 
inguinal canal floor of the inguinal canal is formed by the upper surface of the inguinal ligament the inguinal ligament will only form the inguinal ligament forms the floor of the inguinal canal now let's see how are the boundaries of the inguinal canal draw the inguinal canal firstly the inguinal canal lies oblique like this it's the boundaries and then we have the three muscles right the external oblique the internal oblique and the transverse abdominis these are the three muscles we have the external oblique internal oblique and the transverse abdominis and then we have the external skin which goes till here and covers like this then here we have the testis and this one is the superficial inguinal ring deep inguinal ring and this is the superficial inguinal ring this is the inguinal canal and just medial to the deep inguinal ring we have the epigastric artery inferior epigastric artery and we have another artery called as the obliterated umbilical artery here so this is about the boundaries so anteriorly it is formed by the skin superficial fascia and the external oblique and the internal oblique aponeurosis and the posterior wall is formed by the we have the fascia transversalis and a conjoint tendon the posterior wall right i told you we have the fascia transversalis and then the conjoint tendon so the anterior wall is formed by the external oblique and the internal oblique aponeurosis along with the skin and superficial fascia and the roof roof is formed by the lower arched fibers of the internal oblique and the transverse abdominis and the floor is formed by the inguinal ligament so this is about the boundaries of the inguinal canal now let's discuss about the deep inguinal ring and the superficial inguinal ring and then we are going to look at the structures passing through them it's a very important question sometimes they may ask in the university exams what are the structures passing through the deep and the superficial inguinal rings so let's get clear into it let's discuss about the inguinal rings inguinal rings firstly we'll discuss about the deep inguinal ring all right guys if you are new to this channel please make sure to subscribe and leave a comment so that i can help you with another anatomy videos so coming to deep inguinal ring the deep inguinal ring is an oval opening right oval opening in the fascia transversalis fascia transversalis and lies about 1.25 cm above the mid inguinal plant we have the inguinal ligament above the mid inguinal plant uh, mid inguinal ligament 1.25 cm above it we find the deep inguinal ring from its margins the fascia transversalis is prolonged into the canal so the fascia transversalis will go into the canal like a sleeve and the internal spermatic fascia so this is about the deep inguinal ring coming to superficial inguinal ring we have another ring called the superficial inguinal ring what have in the superficial inguinal ring it's an triangular opening triangular opening and the, this superficial inguinal ring is a triangular gap in the aponeurosis of external oblique it has the external oblique aponeurosis so what happens the pubic crest is there right pubic crest forms the base of this triangle and the sides of the triangle are called as the crura which meet laterally to form an obtuse apex so near the apex we have the two crura united by the intercrural fibers it is approximately 2.5 cm long and 1.2 cm in the base so this is about the superficial inguinal ring and the deep inguinal ring now coming to the structures passing through the deep and the superficial inguinal ring which is very important so please keep listening all right coming to the structures passing through them structures passing through the deep inguinal ring deep inguinal ring so what are the structures passing through actually the structures will differ in the male and the female 
we'll discuss them separate this is the male here we have the female so coming to male in male the ductus difference and its artery we have the ductus difference and its artery we'll pass through the uh, deep inguinal ring and then we also have the testicular artery we have the testicular artery and the accompanying veins accompanying veins we will also pass through the deep inguinal ring and then we have the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve and lastly we have the autonomic nerves and lymphatics autonomic nerves and lymphatics so what are the structures passing through the deep inguinal ring in the males we have the ductus difference and its artery we have a testicular artery and the accompanying veins genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve autonomic nerves and the lymphatics what do you have in the females firstly it is the round ligament of the uterus round ligament of uterus and then the obliterated remains of the obliterated remains of the processus vaginalis processus vaginalis and then we have the lymphatics from the uterus lymphatics from the uterus and lastly we have the same genital branch of the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve so these are the structures passing through the deep inguinal ring in the male and the female now we will look at the structures passing through the superficial inguinal ring so coming to the structures passing through the superficial inguinal ring so it will also differ in the male and the female but it's much simpler than the deep inguinal ring so what we have in the male we have a spermatic cord and then we have the ileo inguinal nerve which is a segment from the l1 ileo inguinal nerve so what is spermatic cord artery its contents and boundaries i have discussed in another video please make sure to watch that to get it deep into the spermatic cord and in female we have the round ligament of uterus round ligament of uterus and then they have the same ileo inguinal nerve actually ileo inguinal nerve enters the inguinal canal by piercing the wall and not through the deep inguinal ring it actually pierces the wall and comes through the superficial inguinal ring so these are the structures passing through the deep and the superficial inguinal rings now we are going to look at look into the inguinal triangle all right coming to the inguinal triangle the inguinal triangle is situated deep into the posterior wall of the inguinal canal we have the inguinal canal and posterior to that we have the inguinal triangle hence it is also seen in the inner aspect of the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall we have the anterior abdominal wall in the inner aspect of the inguinal canal we find the inguinal triangle coming to the boundaries of the inguinal triangle boundaries so what do you have in the boundaries medially medially we have the lower 5 cm of the rectus abdominis muscle the lower 5 cm of the rectus abdominis muscle rectus abdominis muscle lateral border of the rectus abdominis the lower 5 cm forms the medial boundary of the inguinal triangle and then laterally lateral border lateral border is formed by the inferior epigastric artery inferior epigastric artery so that's of the medial border lateral border and finally we have the inferior border inferior border is formed by the medial half of the inguinal ligament the medial half of inguinal ligament so this these are the boundaries of the inguinal triangle now i will draw and show you so this is the rectus abdominis muscle 
this 5 cm forms the lateral border we have the uh, rectus abdominis muscle and then we have the inferior epigastric artery here and then the medial half of the inguinal ligament so this is the five, uh, lateral uh, lower 5 cm of the rectus abdominis muscle we have the lateral border as the inferior epigastric artery and inferior border as the medial half of the inguinal ligament so this forms the boundaries of the uh, inguinal triangle it is also called as the hesselbeck's triangle hesselbeck's triangle so this is about the inguinal triangle in the upcoming video we are going to discuss about the inguinal hernias what are the differences between them so guys if you like the video make sure to subscribe and please 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 hit the like button so that it will encourage me to make some more videos thank you thank you so much